From Genoa to Milan to Paris and finally to Istanbul. Icardi is one of the most interesting strikers in our generation. It feels like every month we hear a new insane story coming from him. But no matter what you think about him, you can't deny his goal scoring prowess, which at one point put him on par with some of the best players in the world. The now 30 year old was born in Rosario, Argentina on February 19, 1993. And at the young age of nine, he would move to the Canary Islands in Spain. He would start his footballing career with Spanish six-tier side Vecindario. He would turn the head of a lot of scouts, and the world's biggest clubs would fight for him for him at a young age. He would get offers from Real Madrid, Liverpool, Arsenal, Sevilla, and more. But he would famously choose the La Masia Academy and sign a youth contract with Barcelona until 2013. His time at Barcelona wouldn't be as glamorous as he hoped. He would be playing in the youth teams and would be promoted to the U19 squad, but decided his future wouldn't be at Barcelona and would move on to Italian side Sampdoria in 2011. He later stated that leaving Barcelona was the right decision for him. At Sampdoria, he would play in the Primavera team and he would impress enough to where they would complete his purchase for 400,000 euros. Famously, he would decline to play for the U19 Italian's guide when he was called up and said he had his hopes to play for Argentina. A couple months later, he would get his wish when Argentina would call him up to the U20 side and he would declare for them ever since. In 2012-2013 would be his first season playing in the top flights where he would appear for Sampdoria 31 times and score an impressive 10 goals. It was clear he was going to be a special player when he scored 4 goals in one game against Serie A side Pescara. Sampdoria would survive the drop this season, and it wouldn't take long for the biggest clubs to come knocking on the door for the young star. And he would famously choose Inter Milan. For 6.5 million euros, the Nerazzurri would be the ones to pick him up. Unfortunately for him, his debut season would be slowed down by injury, but in 27 appearances, he would score 10 and assist 4. Now that he had settled in, his next season would be his rise to fame grabbing his first top scorer season with 22 goals in the Serie A. The 14-15 season would see him play 47 matches and in all competitions he would score 27 and assist a further 9. The 15-16 season once again saw him battle injuries and here he would show his questionable character where after a match against Bologna he had scored to win the game 1-0. He would blame his teammates for a lack of service to the Italian media. His prima donna style would see him get benched for the next match but it was clear that Icardi was simply too good to be on the bench. But all in all, he would still put up impressive numbers. Despite only taking the pitch 34 times, he would score 16 and assist a further 4. The following season would see Icardi keep his good scoring form, and in 41 appearances for the club, he would score 26 and assist 8. He would become the captain of Inter Milan, and they would finish mid-table that season, meaning that they would only have the Serie A to worry about. This would be a blessing in disguise for Inter, as the 17-18 season would see Icardi turn a new gear, winning his second top scorer award in the Serie A. He would captain his side to a 4th place finish, giving them the right to play in the Champions League, their first time since their legendary treble season in the 2010-2011. Scoring an impressive 29 goals and assisting 1 in 34 appearances, it was clear that he was one of the best strikers in the world. So not getting called up to the 2018 World Cup side was a shock to many, with Argentina calling up Kun Aguero and Gonzalo Higuain, which by no means were bad options, but a man worth 100 million euros according to transfer market should have been called up. It must have been something else contributing to this, and that thing would be his very interesting relationship with Argentinian model and TV personality Wanda Nara. Wanda would originally be married with his Sampdorian teammate Maxi Lopez, and Maxi Lopez would be his friend. They would be pictured at multiple places together, and to put the long story short, he would basically end up stealing his wife and married Wanda. This relationship did not go over well with many Argentine footballers, and even Diego Maradona would claim that Icardi was dead to him. This would most likely be the biggest contributing factor as to why Icardi doesn't get called up for Argentina, even to this day. The 18-19 season had seen them finish third in their UCL group behind Barcelona and Tottenham, and they would finish fourth in the league once again. Icardi would have a few suspension problems and would play 37 times that season, scoring 17 and assisting 5. Still impressive numbers, but nowhere near his best years. 
And that would be Icardi's final season with Inter. He would go trophyless in five seasons with them and find himself on a loan move to French giants PSG. His time at PSG would be his best in terms of trophies, and in his first season he would win a French domestic treble with the league title, league cup, and French cup. This season they would go all the way to the UCL final before losing to Bayern. In total, he would have 20 goals and 4 assists in 34 appearances. He would officially be transferred to the Parisians for 50 million euros. The 2020-2021 season would see his trophy cabinet grow, winning his second French Cup and a French Super Cup. But his performances would decline as he would struggle heavily with injuries. Playing just 28 games all season, he would score 13 and assist 6. The 2021-2022 season would be the last one for PSG, where it was clear he was not a good fit with the squad. He would find himself on the bench, even falling off out of the squad for the last 6 games of the season. He would make 30 appearances, but scoring a dismal 5 goals and not recording any assists, he would fall off the radar, and a change was necessary for him. That's when the following season, Galatasaray would secure his signature for a loan. And in Turkey, he would find his groove, where he would go back to his scoring ways, leading Galatasaray to a league title. And in 26 appearances for the club, he would score 23 and assist 8, meaning he would have 31 goal contributions, sending them to the UCL playoffs. Galatasaray would do anything to sign him, and they would fall in love with him. The love would be reciprocated by Icardi, who was signed for 10 million euros. He would sign a deal until 2026. Icardi this season has been on absolute fire and is clearly the best player in Turkey, scoring decisive goals in both the league and Champions League. He scored the winning goal against Manchester United at Old Trafford and scored an ice-cold Panenka penalty against Bayern Munich. In 16 appearances so far in the 23-24 season, he has scored 15 assisted too. He has currently equaled his 48 goal contributions for PSG in 50 less appearances and will surely be the star of the team for years to come. So, what do you guys think of Icardi? Was his exilement from the national team deserved? Is he the best Super League player? Let me know in the comments below, and please like this video and subscribe for more videos like this one.